All right, so do you guys need, do we need to recap what happened or does everybody remember? Uh, basically, you guys saved those bards from those that random menagerie of undead creatures and uh, you killed them all um, and you basically uh, wanted a Jesse, uh, Elikar very smartly wanted payment because that's your job. Uh, and you didn't you ended up trading a song in the end for it because I I, I think you took pity on them. Uh, yeah, they, were, they was broke, so we uh, took. Yeah, and uh, the last thing you saw was the dragon flying north as the crow flies towards Fort Garment. So you guys were racing there on your horses. Along with the Nyx, uh, Tim is obviously not here. I'll be playing his ranger, Nyx, with he's a Draken Warden, a Drake Warden, whatever, how you ever say it. I'm playing his uh, character, but I placed you guys on the board. You guys know where you guys are. You've been to Fort Garment before. I put you here, but before you get there, uh, you're with Malin. Uh, he's writing and mentions to you guys that he, he, he does want to scout ahead. So he ra uh, he races ahead of you guys to scout the area, but you guys also have that option too if you want to break off. If he goes like east and you go west, or he goes west and you guys go east. Like I said, I put your minis on the board, but if you want to move them somewhere to scout the area or blaze a trail, I don't know what you guys want to do. You can tell me, you know, what you how you guys. I'll uh, think. I'll, you know, I, I would say that we probably track better together, and if we encounter something, being separated would be a bad idea. Oh, you say to Malin before you guys break off or whatever? Like, no, we need to stay together type thing? Malin? I don't know. I'm talking to uh, Jorgen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, screw that guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he's just like, I want to go somewhere else. Is it prepared? He's like, so that's fine. <laughs> all, the, all the rest of us should say. So. Yeah, we look at each other. We're like, yeah, we're together. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I, I said. Red shirt, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah, totally fine. That's what I was just asking. Like I said, I I put your minis here because you guys have been here before and you know the area. You, I'll allow you to move your minis, you know, on the the outside of the board if you guys want to move, you know, where you want to be. So yeah, I mean, if you want to come in. Well, th there's this. Uh, it's kind of like not uh, distinct around you, but this is kind of just swampland around the fort. And there's one main trail going to the fort, um, but you guys, uh, you know, it's it's raised up a little bit, so it dries up around the fort. So obviously, you can ride around if you want. Um, but I, you know, I've hid things that I don't want you guys to see. Obviously, if you see any kind of any or anything, it's it's totally fine. I'm not gonna freak out. So, like I said, I just put your guys here for this is where you guys come in if you want. But if you have a different idea of where you want to go, you can move the you know move the uh, cursor around and move the camera around to see if you want to come somewhere else, come in from a different direction. I, I don't care. I think this is as good as any other place. Okay, I, I just put you here because actually, to be honest, your minis were here from the last time you guys were at the fort. And so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just kept them here. I didn't, I didn't. Fair enough. But I wanted, yeah, but I wanted to give you the option because if you're scouting it or trying to be careful, you know, is this, uh, whatever. I just wanted to give you guys the option. And uh, the, this area behind us, this little thing, can, I, can we go, I remember we stabled our horses in here last time. Yeah, you could do that. I opened them if you guys want to, if you guys want to stable your, put your horses in there. Yeah, I'm just going to give it the old once through a roo, just to make sure there's nothing nefarious inside and it's all hunky-dory in here. Uh, I'm not going to make you rule, but when you go in, uh, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Nothing, there's no undead or anything, but there is uh, a little bit of that black mist kind of on the ground. But it's it, it could be, uh, unless you want to do a test or something, it could be part of the swamp. Uh, because remember, those crisp, the crystals were here. Before you guys saw that one crystal, so um, you know it's just there. Gotcha. I don't see uh, what I can do to test it. Um, well, you know, to be fa to be fair, nothing has really happened to you guys if you have walked through it or whatever. You know what I mean? So uh, I think I'm just letting you know. I, I look at him. I was like, 
it could be fog from the swamp. I wouldn't really yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Like we still be locked up in here where it's harder to get to. Yeah. I have a, uh, I have a used spell slot, so are, are we... Did we, uh... I'll say that, like, um... I'll give you guys the benefit of a long rest because even though you're riding your horses, it wasn't, it was a trail, right? And so it wasn't uh, difficult terrain. You know, you've been by these trade roads a lot. So, um, you know, riding up, I'll give you guys the long rest. Okay. So go ahead and long rest. Go ahead and click the box and you're good to go. All right. Um, well, all right. But it seems safe to leave our. Yeah, it, in fact, um, there is a little bit of hay there, and it, it is elevated, so it's dry, and it looks like it's been covered. So somebody probably came through here before and has also left horses here before. Awesome. All right. So I'm happy with that. I'll take a mug of ale before I start walking out. Uh, yeah, when Nyx comes through, he immediately rescends his dragon. You know, he does a cool slide in, and since he can ride his dragon as a mount, he doesn't obviously need to board it. So it disappears. I believe he had a ring. So it disappears into his ring, and he's ready to go. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Gotta, gotta have a way to pack our stuff. Right. <laughs> uh, keep that safe. All right, so I think... Heading towards the castle? Yep. Red dragon? Yes. Going up towards the door. Uh, you guys, as soon as you get there, I'm not going to make you roll, but you smell just, it smells like a graveyard in here, you know, and it smells like freshly dug earth, and you get that gross ichor. I mean, both of you guys have fought creatures and things before. It's just that smell of like, it's almost a smell of like after a kill when you guys are cleaning up and searching bodies and is just totally like it just hits your nostrils. In fact, I'm not going to make you to disadvantage or anything, Jorgen, but it is especially frustrating to you because of your heightened senses or whatever. It, uh, um, but sorry, Jorgen, go ahead and make a, if you'd like to, you can make a perception roll to see if, you know, you can, if anything wafts to the surface as far as smells go. Is there anything you want to do, Alucard, while he's doing that? Do you want to, like, uh, stealth or scatter? Kind of, you got an 11? Um, you do get a whiff of fur, like wet fur. I'm sure you tell, you tell Alucard that or... A wet dog. Hmm. Well, are we expecting trouble? What do you think? Of course, we're expecting trouble. We're going yeah. into Fort Underpainted. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. I'm not going to correct you. I figured it's like you know trying to control the tide. You call it what you want. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna fight it. I'm not fighting anymore. I'm not gonna fight over the name. I'm not. It's not worth it. It's totally not worth it. Well, we can morph now, or we can morph later. Do you guys want uh, you uh, you guys want to? Probably be safer to do it now. That way, we're. Uh, uh, you want to do your maledicts and all that now? Yeah, I think so. I think it's gonna be better if we just do maledicts. Now. All right, Jorgen, you uh, you uh, hulked out over here. So hopefully, you have control of that mini because I just gave you control of it. Right there. There you go. All right. All right, sorry, Jorgen. I'm gonna kill your other mini here that we. Ah, all right. Uh, so you Hulk out. You guys took your damage. Uh, yeah. So what do you, are you guys just gonna? I mean, this front door is open. Uh, are you guys just bursting in? Um, yeah. We as long as yeah, the, these these don't expire until. We... And just, just to let you guys know, when you look in this door, I described this before, but just to remind you, because it's been a long time since so you guys have walked around uh, Ford Underpants. This section right here is part of a like a, um, a um, circular stone wall that is collapsed. And so you can walk up these stairs and you'll basically spy out into the courtyard because the side of the wall is broken down, you know, from 
just decay and no upkeep. Um, so, yeah. I just want to make you aware of that. And I'll cast uh, Cantrip Light on my chest. So oh, not wow. only are my swords both glowing, casting 20 feet of light, so is my like chest plate. Wow. I'm a very bright, bright guy. You basically have a headlight. Yeah, basically I have a headlight. That works. I'm uh, lighting up the, the place. Cool. A lot. All right, so... So just to do this in unison, uh, I'll do it in the way you guys are doing it right now. So, uh, Elikar, you are first. What? Where would you like to go? And these are, again, five-foot squares, so just so you guys know. Oh, go ahead, Jorgen, what? Yeah. I, I was just going to... I was like, maybe we missed something last time. Let's uh, look for any other, like, trap doors or any kind of stuff like that. For last, last time we came through, it was pretty plain and simple, but we couldn't have missed something. It's true that. I don't think we ever left this level. Like, I, this is a castle, right? So there's like levels above us. We well, go check those. I, I don't know. I was going to say, like, there would be a level above you, but again, this thing is in disarray. So if you see a platform, like, I'll just do... Like, all these stairs are destroyed, like, right here. They kind of go up to nothing, just like they're here. There is a few platforms that survive, like, here. I don't know if you see my spotlight. Those things you can climb up on. But if you see any other staircase, stuff like that, it, it's all fallen over. So just treat this as, like, a, treat this as like a first floor uh, thing. What about the red wood plank? Yeah, can we inspect that? Okay, uh, just above board, so you guys don't waste a lot of time. I deleted a piece of stone and just put that in there because there was a hole, and I didn't want you guys to fall through the level. And so that is, that's not me signaling a trap. That's me like, oh, I don't want them to fall through the level because I've elevated this board. Uh, ple you know, here's red. That's fine. Okay. So we're just gonna continue. Yeah, basically. Basically, made a piece of tile right here. The the mason got on site and realized he had the wrong building materials. That the order he had was wrong, and he said, "Well, I got a red piece of stone, and it fits, and I'm going home." And he put it in the thing and left. And he was like, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not going to be here all day. I'm not going back home to get one more piece of cut of stone." Match these stones. Yep, they're so Especially with those zombies walking around. I'm, go uh, through this entrance. I'm going to have, just to let you guys know, um, my mouse is moving slow, but I'm going to have uh, Nyx come to the top of these stairs. And so he's going to try to, you know, get to a high, higher elevation so he can uh, kind of, yeah, run overwatch. And he crouches. I can't status him, but he's basically crouched right here right now. So he can, like, all this wall is blown. I'm pointing my screen like you guys can see, but... Basically, this whole section is blown out, so he has a clear shot of, like, you know, a cone. Well, that's not that big of a leap over either for him. He could jump over there and still have to be, like, right behind the folders or something. Yeah, he, in fact, he, I'm going to have his movement, and this is all he can do, but he's basically doing the sniper thing where he gets into position, crouches down, puts all of his, you know, his arrows down or whatever so he can, like, hunker down, you know, if stuff goes bad. And he's got cover on him. He's got cover on him in case. Now, uh, when you guys come in this door, you see these uh, cast right here just spewing that uh, black fog that you have seen right here and here. And you do see these right here, even though they're creatures and you have fought them before, they are stone. They are not moving, but they are facing the direction they're facing here. So you see that they're facing, according to my compass, they're facing west. So, yes, they are spewing out black whatever. These right here, I didn't want to busy up the board, but just like the town of Mirror that you went to before, um, well, not Mirror, but that um, the town with the farmers that were like undead and you talked to the ghost uh, matriarch and her husband who was chained to the desk doing office work in his uh, in his uh, um, undeadness or whatever 
uh, and you saw the farmers still working, that's kind of what is walking around, where you see various, it appears to be villagers, walking around in like a state of stupor. They're not aggressive. But these zombies that are more decayed here are in fact aggressive, and they're going to roll to see if they see you. Because they're dumb and they're zombies. Uh, well, th um, one zombie, strangely enough, in the back, he gets an award for being whatever. He sees you and just starts coming this way. But, of course, their movement isn't that great. So he's going to stop right there. But he has noticed you. Uh, the character here is oblivious. So uh, what would you guys like to do? protection from good and evil on myself okay yeah so they have disadvantage in attacking you right uh they have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target which is me target can also not be charmed frightened or possessed well there you go and it's uh aberration celestial elements fey fiends and undead which these would be yeah of course undead. uh so yeah, Jorgen, are you going to, since he's doing that, was it casting time of one? Sorry. Uh, cast. It's a concentration lasts up to ten minutes. It's an action. Yep. Um, yeah, there's no cast time. It's just happens. Okay. Or it'll usually say like instant or something on the one action. Sorry. It's just cat. Yeah, one action. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Because some of them, yeah. you can you can cast some spells as a ritual. So do you know about that? Like, oh, it takes... Okay. It takes, yeah, it takes longer, but you don't burn a spell slot when you do it. So, okay, I'm just making sure that you didn't want to do that or whatever. So, and then I'll move forward behind Jorgen, I assume Jorgen. Okay. Yeah, he's where he is. Jorgen, what would you like to do since this one zombie has um, seen you coming? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is, a, I'll take that as your, that is, yeah, no, yeah, I'm not going to be a dick. Yeah, you just burned your action, bro. No, I would say that's an interact with object. No, I don't care. Anyway, yeah, you flip them off. No big deal. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to look and see if I can, so there's two of them right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one sees you. And this, it's a zombie. He is very dumb. Even though this one uh, walks up to him, he does not, uh, he does not pay attention. If I, like, per se, ran over there and mauled him with that one right beside him, he's going to hear it. Correct. That might get his attention, yeah. Gonna take so, his claw and he's gonna smack him in the face to rip his face off and he's gonna throw it at the other one. <laughs> That'd be crazy. That got dark. <laughs> that thing we talked about earlier about that got dark quick. <laughs> and again, in your beast, your beast form, we've already established you can also cast spells. I've allowed you to do that because you're not a mindless whatever. You have all your intelligence and all your abilities. I gotta get my. Oh yeah, is that like a point of? Um... It says, "Utter a divine word, burning radiance erupts from you. Each creature of your choice that you can see within range must exceed a Constitution saving throw." No. Or take one d six radiant damage. That's pretty good. No, excuse me, 2d6. Oh, would you like to do that? I have to be within five feet of them. Oh, okay. Do you want to be with the, You haven't moved yet. You could do that. <laughs> He's like, I have the power to do that. Well, I was making sure that that was one of my, my uh, hand trips and not my... Uh, 
Yeah, and you, you, uh, you're, you're, you. I, I hate to burst your bubble, but you are so. I mean, yeah, I know that uh, Elicar is um, hoarding healing potions, but you know, you are kind of a backup healer too. So. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to like burn everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too bad they don't have a potion of spell slots. Yeah. So they, right, so they have to make it. What's the number? All right, the two here. Uh, this one, how much, uh, roll your damage. Hang on, let me look at the game log here. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, uh, in fact, I would say this is radiant damage. These are zombies. I would say they're actually vulnerable to it, so that does double damage. So this guy, <laughs> this guy who was um, not paying attention died you literally blow him apart with like white light like you speak a word and like bright light appears on him and he just burns away like you know burning a piece of paper like it you know like a campfire almost but this guy the other guy is hurt the other zombie but he's not dead all the way he made his save uh so uh you are gonna i'm not gonna make you guys well i'll make you guys all roll for initiative now since you guys have taken actions Okay. 15. So. Uh. So you got there. And then it's him. And then you hear a moan from here. And that guy comes out, but this guy is not. So we're going to apply turn owner. So. Oh, did it not do... Oh, no, you're first, right, Elikar? Right? Because you said 15? Oh, it looks like... Uh, 13, sorry. And 13 for me. I was, I was 15. Oh, okay. Okay, hang on. Yeah, let me... Okay, we'll just... It, it For some reason, it... So you're first, uh, Jorgen, right? I don't want to skip you. So you got first again. Okay, so... I'm just going to whack that guy in front of me. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you this, just like you fought them before, you saw them, that uh, village uh, or the, when you were fighting, you know, with the bards uh, in that uh, whatever, his eyes are glowing red in a way that you haven't, this is the second time you've encountered it really, uh, you know, he looks a little bit more than a zombie. Uh, yeah, well, you just gotta climb. Yeah, I'm just gonna smack him. All right. Ooh, that hit. Roll for damage, please. That's your first claw, by the way. That's my first claw. Nine. Okay. What kind of? So I always ask this, and I probably need a sticky note. Your claw? Does does it? Is it? What was it? Was it fire? I'm going to write it down right now because I always forget. I'm going to do like a left and right claw. And then Jesse, yours, your, were your blades both the same? Uh, I'm writing it down right now because I always ask you guys. So I'm writing it down. Uh, are you... Uh, oh, the... Oh, they do radiant damage, that, not fire damage. That That's crimson right, right? Yeah, Correct. Crimson right. Bonus action. Activate right. Uh, right okay, damage sir. is magical. While you last support the weapon until you complete one d six. Right. So are are. Uh, <coughs> do you bolt? What the hell? Uh. So wait, Elikar, your both ears do fire, or both ears do radiant, both your blades. That's what I'm trying to, cause it, cause of the ghost hunter thing. I'm oh. Let me, let me double check. Four lightning damage. Okay, four lightning damage. Uh, I'll go. It's right at the dawn. Okay, it's part of your crimson red feature. Um, what's up here? Uh, while the right of dawn is active, the extra damage dealt by your right is radiant. Oh, okay. I 
I guess it's I guess it's light now because I'm right of dawn. Okay, so you do. So just yeah, right down light. <laughs> oh, right, I'll write it on radiant, because that's radiant. Yeah. So, you, yeah. like I said, these creatures are vulnerable to it, so your swords are actually do double damage to them. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, back to you, Jorgen, with your because you already hurt this guy once, and it is just a zombie. You split, you know, with your one claw. Uh, what was your second claw to hit? I haven't even. Used it yet. Okay. Yeah, you hit him once. He looks like you take a chunk out of his, like his rib cage. But of course, it's a zombie, so he doesn't care. So he's still going to try to attack, or you know, he's still functional. Go ahead with your second uh, attack. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> it's that would hit somebody with plate five. So all t like so, how do you want to kill this zombie? Oh yeah. So ten all together. Yeah, how do you want to kill this zombie? Are you just gonna rip him in half, or what do you want to do? You know, just kind of like that laugh that just smacks him apart. Okay, <laughs> Yeah, he he is out. Like, you just smack him. And, like, from you clawing him because you took part of his ribs out, he, you like, you're, it's like going through paper machete, you know, your other claw goes through, and he just, like, crumples to the ground in parts. Um, so he's dead. So, Elicar, it's your turn. And I know I didn't move this guy, but he basically comes to the doorway so you can see him. So, it's again, it's still your turn. I'm just letting you know he moved forward. Okay. This other's up. Both the other zombies are dead? Yes. Oh. Um, I'll use a bonus action to start my blade song. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have 40 feet of movement. Holy shaz, bud. Go ahead and get up here. And uh, is there any space to hit between Jorgen and the... Uh, I won't. Uh, I'm going to move you. I'm not going to duck your movement. You can get right here. I'll just say it's not. It doesn't. You know, just so you can get a clean shot. So I'm not going to make you, you know, I'm not going to take away your yeah. movement or anything. Okay, and I got, I got 40 feet, so I have quite a bit. Of yeah, you're fine. Yeah, like I said, I'm doing that for your benefit. I'm not going to make you deduct movement for that. I will do my two my attacks here. Yep. Um, I'm looking at the thing, looking at the log. Okay. Well, right. well, yep. Second. Uh, yeah, can you just roll damage all together since you hit both times? If that's easier. Well, I can't. Okay, yes, you're just saying. Um, so I'd be doing 2d8 plus 2d6 and then add 3. Add 6 total. So 19 plus 6. 25. Uh, which is often 25. Uh, so you did double damage. You did 50 points of damage with radiant damage with your rapiers. Because remember, they're vulnerable to radiant damage. That's right. So, um, what? How do you want to destroy the zombie with your two blades? Um, I'm going to like do a a jump at him, like cross attack, and he just splits into four pieces as I jump through his corpse. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> right. To end up behind him. Okay. Uh, uh, like some anime character. Yeah. So you're looking at this zombie, and I'm going to add this zombie to the uh, the turn because obviously you're in front of him. Uh, but Jorgen, it is your turn. Uh, if you want to. And I have an extra attack. Oh yeah, you do because I was one attack. Do you want to just attack this one? Or did yeah you didn't move all you didn't use all your movement so yeah. Go ahead. No. I and so now that I've jumped through that first zombie, I'll go ahead and strike. We'll just dab both into that one. Okay, go ahead and I'm looking. Go ahead and roll. There's one. Eleven. And fifteen. The fifteen hit. Okay. Do my one to six. So it's eleven plus uh, fifteen damage. Okay, so how much of that was the radiant damage? The radiant damage is the four. 
So it would have been 8 points of radiant damage and 11 points from your sword. Yeah, so 19 points. So how do you want to kill this zombie? Uh, I just, I'm, like I said, I'm just kind of thrusting in and stabbing through it. And I guess it just kind of gurgles. And well, when you, when you stab it, they, it, it's almost like what Jorgen did with you know, his claws. Um, but instead, it like burns away. Like you see, uh, as you stab your rapier into it, like light comes out of its mouth as it like you know reacts in pain. Its mouth opens, light comes out of its mouth and like shoots out of its eyes, and then it just like fades away into light. And your sword still like shining light like a flashlight. And then when the zombie goes away, your sword like kind of fades away to like a dull light again. Cool. All right. <laughs> All right. Is there any other enemies nearby? Uh, Jorgen, I'll kill this. Do you want to move into the room, or are you going to stay there? I'll, uh, you know, it's your turn now. Uh, well, I have, I can see in the dark, so... Yeah. You... Right, and just to let you guys know, the moment you get in this room and like the small heat of combat is over with, you um, you it just feels really weird in this room. So, uh, do you want to the the room? Well, yeah, you can like uh, it's this is mostly for you, Elakar, because you're in the room. But it it feels really strange in this room. Like there's a weird like. That smell of like you know when it's gonna rain like that smell of pavement in 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 the rain like you can smell that in this room like this weird I don't know I see yeah um, can I is there anything uh, no it's not my turn okay but good I just noted yeah I can't move my character but I was gonna oh let me see if I. Maybe something happened. One second. We're still in action, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, let me make sure. Hang on. There you go. Try again. I just gave you permission again. Nope. Oh, are you stuck, maybe? I was kind of stuck on debris. Try that now. Nope. Huh. Weird. Um... Uh, uh, try that. Does that work? Can you move them now? I tried doing a bunch of stuff. Let, maybe I'm clicked on somebody. Okay, go ahead, try now. Still no? Nope. Alright, so where do you want to move? <laughs> do you want to move right behind him or past him? Or do you even want to go in the room that uh, Alucard is in? Or do you want to stay? I, well, I'm just going to say, hey, I think we might still have more be, be uh, cautious. Alright. Uh I'll uh, stab first and ask questions later, as they say. Are you gonna? <laughs> you are gonna need to stay where you are, or are you gonna move? I, well, I can walk in. You want to walk in? Okay, it's right here. The moment, the moment you like put your claw down, you know your foot claw down. Um. A creature just pops in to, do you guys see that? Oh, like right in front of us? Yeah, it just pops in, and it's, it's a, uh, I'm not going to make you guys roll, it matches the description of that, you know, when you took the lid off those smoky urns at uh, Vela Keep, and you saw the outline of that bald elf creature, female elf creature, that's what this looks like. But this creature in front of you is holding two black chains that have that smoke that you guys have been walking through, like wrapped around the chains. And the chains are more ethereal than they are uh, physical objects. And the moment um, both of you, uh, or, you know, uh, Jorgen puts his claw down, she uh, is going to try to 
um, she's going to try to um, throw her chain at you, uh, Alakar. So. And just, and just uh, check. Is this a aberration slash shield element fey fiend or undead? It, one second, I have notes on him. Uh, give me one thing. That I, uh, uh. Right. Is this for the good people? No, I know, I know. I, I, you know what, I don't know. Nope, it's a humanoid. Humanoid? Yeah. A regular ass person. Yeah, uh... <laughs> I know. It is weird. You're like, oh, they. This one's busty. Um, throws, throws the hits you with the chains. What do I gotta get to hit you? Sorry, I'm not looking at your character right now. I'm looking at the. Oh, uh, you, with me singing my song, you need a 19. Uh, the first chain, the first chain misses, but they get multi attack. So they're gonna try to hit you again with the chain. And I can cast shield as a reaction. That's five. Right. Uh, 26. Would you, do you want to cast shield or no? No, it won't matter. <laughs> yeah, so I, I get hit with the chains. Okay. Uh, I'm just, at, I was asking, because they're going to come into you. Um, hang on. Mm -hmm. You take 10 damage. Okay. And, uh... The chain, uh, hang on, i got to roll another dice. Sorry, this is a special enemy. So the chain gets into you, and the chain wraps around uh, your waist. And to escape, you have to roll a DC 14 uh, check, which would be a grapple. I think, hang on, I'm looking at grapple. I always forget. Uh... I would say a strength check to make that would make the most. Well, I would say yeah, maybe a dex check. So you got to get a dex for a DC fourteen dex saving throw. Or it says it. Okay. It says it says DC. So. You are not grappled. You just take your sword. And you knock the chain away. And after she, and uh, it's your turn, Jorgen. Well, as that happens, I kind of, I can move now. I jump past this door. <laughs> You're like, yay! <laughs> and I'm a whacker. All right, uh, roll to hit. And you gotta, you got to tell me what you got, because I'm looking at her stats right now. I'm not looking at the log. You miss on the first claw. Oh, I fall on my face on the second. I don't. Is it a single digits? Is that what you got? Uh, it's a one plus my modifier. Okay. It's seven. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just. She. It. It. Uh. You know. She basically like. To just give you a better metal picture, you know, the chains are like, uh, I'm trying to think, like Ghost Rider way. They're wrapped around her wrists so she can like throw them out, you know, and pull them back like a whip, you know, or like a yo-yo kind of. And, uh, you know, when you go to claw, she just brings her wrist up like a gauntlet, you know, and you, like your claws just knock against it. No big deal. Um, Elicard, it is your turn. Okay. I'm going to run up uh, to the left mm -hmm. of Jorgen. Kind of like I'm sliding into first base. And <laughs> sword and whack around the legs, and then I'm going to stand up and kind of backhand the other sword. The torso area. Okay. Uh, My first go attack. So let's go there. Yeah, like I said, let me know what you get. 23 and 23. Oh my god. Okay, so you hit twice. Go ahead and roll. Um, just. Yeah. Oh, you know what? 
well, I'll do it next turn. I just realized it says humanoid, but in parentheses it says elf, which would be fey and ancestry. So for her to attack you next turn, she'll get disadvantage. Sorry about that. No yeah. I, damage total. total to her. Yeah, how, so you stab into her, and you see them actually cut her, and she, like, <sighs> like hisses, and then um, she... Whoa, I don't want to... Oh, you, oh, yeah, because you get another one. That was both. Go ahead. Go again. Nope. Um, you missed. So your window is anywhere from a 22 to something. <laughs> 21 to whatever you got to hit to whatever. Um, no, that didn't hit. But as you do that, hang on, I got to count. I got to do some math here really quick. Sorry. Can I use my, on my first, first attack? Can I use a bonus action? Wait. Uh, never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, it's been a while since I used this character. Because we have, as blood hunters, like, we have like things that we can put on people, right? Oh, yeah, like a mark, curses, and stuff like that, yeah. Put on blood maledict. Is it an action, or is it, how's that work? So, uh, as uh, you hit her, it uh, the first one obviously connected with her. And after that, you just see her go, and like poof out of existence and like that mist kind of like coalesces in the center and she just vanishes and you see like a little mist fall to the ground okay um could all right and i can't have gone back to cast a brand uh on your first attack yeah no short west whenever you damage a creature with a weapon oh it has an act right you can sear an arcane brand the creature your brand has the following effects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, your brand lasts until you dismiss it, or until you apply a brand to an, another creature. Your brand can be can can be dispelled with dispel magic. Uh. So you want to when you hit her with that attack, you want to hit her. You want to brand her. If I can, but it's it's. I think I think this. Is of a very past tense thing, like I've already rolled the dice. Okay, yeah. and, uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, right. No, that's fine. I mean, you you know, you'll get other actions. This isn't the only time you're gonna fight her. Um, but uh, she vanishes now. <laughs> you guys, uh, you hear uh, um, Nix. Uh, I'm gonna make some rolls really quick. He, you hear that like the bamp of like, you know, Nightcrawler or whatever. Uh, and you hear like some arrows flying. Uh, missed. So, uh, Nyx, maybe try here. What do you guys want to do? I'm not going to, um, you know, I'll keep this combat up for whatever. I'm not going to remove the combat. What do you guys both want to do? Okay. All right. Uh, you guys can move. Uh, it'd be easier if you move first, Jorgen, because you're kind of like closest to the door. Uh, yeah, I was oh, you can't move your guy again? Nope. Hang on. Try now. Nope. All right. Let me. Do you just want to walk out the door? Oh, now try it. Now try it. Oh, there you go. Now I figured that out. Okay. You know why you can do it before? Because it's your turn and they don't want to move you. You know, you, you can't move on your turn, which is weird because you can move on your turn. So do you want to... Yeah. So, El Elica, or before we go to... What do you want to do, Jorgen? Before it's the end of your turn. You move out and you see her next to one of these brazers and it looks like she throws her chain in the brazer and pulls it out. And you see, like, it start, like, a little uh, fire start in the brazier. In this, uh, right here. This guy right here. Uh, I'm trying to... Yeah, right there is 30 feet. 
So you could cast a sp well, you, yeah, you can cast a spell, but. Sure can. Is that yeah. is that a is that the one that is like forty six? It's like a con something or other. Con save. Oh no, that's guiding bolt. Oh, I got you. I got you. That's that's, that's a level spell. I'm using cantrips right now. Yep. That's a the um, sacred flame is a con thing though, right? What? Uh, guiding bolt. Well, you're casting sacred flame, right? I'm casting Sacred Flame as Dexterity. Oh, okay. What's the so, what's the number? 13. Failed. Uh, so, no. yep. So, how much damage do you do? Eight points of damage. Eight. Not bad. All right, uh, Elicar, it is your turn. It, your song's still active, right? So you still have the forty feet of movement. Still got forty feet of movement. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Can I attack? Yeah, you're within five feet of her. All right, attacking. This time I won't forget the uh, other thing. The thing. The brain. Uh, twenty-three and a natural twenty for twenty-six. Holy crap! All right. Uh. So yeah, let me know. This is gonna be rough. Roll your damage, but keep. Well, yeah, yeah. Roll. Yeah, just tell me what you did for damage, damage wise. Okay. Because you got a nat twenty, so that's doubled, obviously. I'll be not great rolls. All right, I did twenty four damage, and I'm going to put the brand of castigation. Okay. Is that like you know where she's at if she tries to move? You always know the direction of the branded creature as long as it's on the same plane mm -hmm. existence as you. Okay. Each time the brand creature uh, deals damage to you or another creature, you can see within five feet of you, the branded creature takes two psychic damage. Oh. Yep. Okay. And it cannot be moved until this spell. And you said you did 24 points of damage to it all together? Yes. And I'll do my extra attack now. Yep. Because that was one attack, right? Excellent. Natural one. <laughs> well, the, the dice lord giveth and the dice lord taketh away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was the second one? 21 for the second. Yeah, the 21 hits. Alright. Twelve damage. Alright. Um, not looking good. You brand her and then you stab your sword into her. She looks like she's bleeding. Uh, it is her turn. You see her vanish again. But because you, because, because, because you, uh, because you um, branded her, you know that she went. The heck, sorry. I clicked on something and it didn't. You see her uh, bamf again here and then um, appear and light the brazier. So you, it, you basically just zoom in on her where she is. And I'm not going to make you roll. You're going to your turn. But because she's so close to you guys when she bamfs out, you just like your eye just draws right to where she's at. But she does the same thing. So she pulls the, you know, puts her chain in. You see a little flame thing, and she pulls her chain out. Um, Jorgen, if you do a melee attack on her, I'm going to give you advantage because she was, she's trying to do this all very quickly. Yes. So oh, sorry. Hi. Go ahead. Oh, good. I, I can move. oh, okay. I thought I screwed you over by moving the turn over again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I tend to do that to you, unfortunately. <laughs> That hit? 25. 
That hit. Both of them hit. Roll for damage. How would you like to kill this Shadow Sister? Uh, actually, I'm gonna, uh, what's the bonus action I have? What's it called? Um, I wanna... Okay, okay. I just like the idea of you like ordering from a menu, your character stopping, like, hang on, what do I want to. Well, no, I was gonna, I was gonna do, uh, Blood Curse of the Fallen Puppet. Oh, yeah, 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 where they get up and stab someone else, yeah. Yeah, they're not happy with you. They would do that if they didn't have another target, I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She gets a... Uh, her head just goes... Oh, yeah, you just have a thing with head, so you, like, stick your claw in her neck and, like, rip her head off, basically. Like well, Predator? Yeah, like Predator. Yeah, like, lift the whole thing up. Well, the next one I'm going through their chest. Okay. Okay. She is dead. Uh, but because these are lit now, these stone creatures, like you see, like the 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 black mist coming out of these cauldrons, kind of like go into these stone creatures, and they become uh, these creatures you fought before. These shadow wolves, they become alive, and now they are also in combat. So I'm going to do this one. And this one. And uh, can everybody roll initiative again? They got... All right. Uh, let me look at the order again. You got... So it goes like this. It's Elikar, then uh, Jorgen, and the Shadow Wolves got really low, so they go last. Correct? Is that right? Did I hear everybody right? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, wait, so Jorgen, you were first, right? Yeah. And then... Well, because I got the opportunity attack on it. Right. Uh, why is this not doing this? Hang on, let me clear the list and start over again. So it was... Well, no, this is brand new because I'm just starting a whole new initiative round because these things just popped out. I wanted it to be fair. So... Uh, you, what did you roll? You rolled Jorgen. I rolled a seven. Oh, okay. Sorry, so. You got a ten, Jorgen. I got a ten, yeah. Seven plus I got, three. I got 17. Okay, you got a 17, so you're first. Then Jorgen. Then these creatures. Alright, I'm applying the turn order. Uh, so it should be you... Uh, yep, you, I don't know why it's, okay, so it should be Elikar, so just to make sure it should be Elikar, Jorgen, and then the wolf creatures, because they rolled really low, right? Correct? Okay, I don't want to skip any better screw that up, because I'm still working out, like, when I tell it to apply turn order, and it doesn't, so <laughs> I'm going to figure that out. So, Elikar, it's your turn, you see both these creatures, and even though they are faced, you know, like I said, uh, west, as soon as they become alive... They just turn and look at both you guys. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn them to look at you guys. So they, but it is still your turn. Uh, one, two, three. Stab, stabby. Okay. First attack. Natural twenty. Nice. Less than good. 
So not a natural 20? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that you're you're not twenty hit with the first sword. Uh, what uh, roll for damage for just the first? Well, yeah, just roll for damage for the first weapon. I want to see what you did with the nat twenty on that. Eleven damage. All together, even with your nat twenty. Well, it's just the one weapon. Oh, right, right, right. Eleven. Okay. And then I'll do... You add in your, uh, curse? Um, not for this guy. I can only do one curse of castigation. No, 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 no. I mean, your blood, right? Oh, yeah. I, I always add that. Okay. Uh, yeah. If, it, if it's an undead, I can do an extra 1d6, but I don't know if this is undead. I'm really shit at math. Okay, real yeah, roll for your second attack. The 19 hit. Eight plus six is often 14. 14 damage. <laughs> is often 14. <laughs> when you add these things together, they're often 14. Okay. <laughs> I have two more turns with uh, Blood Song Craft. Okay. Is that your. Do you have any more actions? Was that both attacks? All your. That was uh, both attacks. I can do a bonus action, which is going to be nothing. Okay. All right, Jorgen, it's all you. All right. Hopefully you can... There you go. You can move your guy. Look at that. Look at that. You're moving him. All right, come up on him. This is this undead? Or what is this? These are... Um, these are... Uh, monstrosities. So that doesn't affect your protection, right? I don't think so. No, it's Fae Fiend, Undead, and Aberrations? Aberrations, Celestials, Elementals. Yeah, it's none of these. Okay, cool. It's a monstrosity. Cool. <laughs> great, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Jorgen. What do you want to... 13. Uh, miss on the 13. You missed. Uh, man. Well, hold on, wait. I, I got a question I was just wanting to check because yep. we're both dual wielding and you get four two actions. Yeah, so your first, yeah, you're, so you miss with both claws, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can, you got another attack, so you're going to attack again with both claws. So roll, you know, and yeah, roll again twice. Mm -hmm. How, sorry, did you say 16? 16 and 17. Both miss. Uh, you missed again. Sorry. So. Oh, that's cool. It's a, it's a house rule. So if you have dual wielding, you attack one of each. Yeah, yeah. The benefit is you hit. Did I get like the, the crazy guy? They're both they're both similar creatures. Uh, it's just that you have a red painted base on your base. Yeah, the, the mine hit on a natural twenty and a nineteen. Yeah, so missed everything else. yeah, so you got to get a nineteen basically to hit him. Um, so this shadow wolf here that I don't know if you guys see its base light up. But it's going to attack Jorgen. It also has like a multi-attack situation. Do you guys see its base light up? See, it's got a little light on its base. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see my base light up. Well, his base is too. See right... Hang on. Right there. See his... It's like a red outline. It's, it, well, the outline's red, but on my screen, if I go like this and put the mouse over it, see uh, the turn order? You can see his base light up. See that? See I take no, it up? Oh, it must be, a, I'm doing it right now, it's a, it must be a GM thing. Uh, he, what about a, does a 19 hit, Jorgen? Well, of course a 19 hit. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, he only hit you with one claw. Uh, he does eight points of damage to you. And that's all I can do because he he uh, I'm I'm just like fast forwarding. He slashed you several times and missed. He rolled really low except for one of his dice. Uh, so he hit you once for eight. Uh, now this other shadow wolf, the one in front of you, Elakar, is going to do the same thing. He's going to slash at you. Uh, what's my what's my uh, to hit number? Sorry. Uh, nineteen to hit, to hit, and where I cast shield his reaction get twenty four. Uh, well, you're totally fine. He does a multi-attack, and he missed with all of his multi-attacks. So, he's slashing at you. You know, you guys are in such close quarters. It's not that he's missing. I imagine you're using your sword to, like, block his claws. You know what I mean? Um, but now it's your turn again. We're back at the beginning of the order. Oh, back to me. All right. Packing away, packing away. Let me know what you... Actually, I can look at the log now. I have his stats in front of me. Fewer, 21 and a 17. 21 hits. The 17 does not. You need a 19 to hit. And then, uh, so it's a 12 damage total. And a second attack's coming in. You said 12 total on the first one? On the first one. And I missed on the second two. Okay, so 12. Uh... Okay, cool. Uh, Jorgen, it is your turn again. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Did you have something else? I was saying, can I uh, use my acrobatics and jump on top of the cauldron? Uh, yes, but he will get an opportunity to slash at you once. There. <laughs> I'm glad we reached an agreement. Okay, uh, give me an athletics check to see if you do it first. Oh, you want to do acrobatics? You want to do like a flip on top of the thing? Yeah, I'm jumping now. I'm doing acrobatics. Okay, you're doing acrobatics. Yes, you are doing acrobatics. And I have an advantage on that because I'm singing my song. Mm -hmm. It's 18. You do it. Uh, so you're on top of the cauldron. Uh, but he gets a slash at you one time. Uh, 20, dirty 20 hit. Yep. Uh, four... Five points of damage. Got it. Uh, sorry, you are going to your turn. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. Jesse hasn't done anything crazy this time, so. I mean, he's always leaping on stuff or leaping around stuff or perioding around things. So that, that's pretty crazy sometimes. I have sometimes. a plan of some kind. <laughs> 19 hit. Mm-hmm. Do that damage. Fifteen for the first one. And that's a mess. And that's a mess. Do you wanna oh you missed the Oh you missed? I missed. Anything else? His first Were you, were you going to say something, Elikar? I'm not going to jump on there like Jesse and risk getting waxed. <laughs> okay. He's like, I'm playing it safe. I'm, I'm on the ground. Were you, were you going to say something, Elikar? Oh, all, all four attacks he missed. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. No, I hit one. I'm yeah, for 12. He hit once for... No, 15. He hit once for 15. You use a blood curse of some kind? If you have? I don't have a blood curse. You don't have a blood. You have a, you're a blood hunter. You have a blood. <laughs> <laughs> not showing any blood curse when I looked at it. Hang on. It, sometimes they put them in a strange menu. Sometimes or like a you know a tab. Hang on. Actually, I gotta use the bathroom. You guys work that out. I gotta use the bathroom really quick. Blood Curse of March. Okay, bonus action. Um, and this is part of the Curse of Exposure. When a creature you see within 30 feet takes damage from an attacker spell, you can use Reaction. 
uh, or in this case a bonus action, uh, to remove any damage resistance dealt by the triggering attack spell, including the triggering effect. This lasts until the target's next turn, so damage resistances. Okay, so if they're resistant to our damage, like they resist claw attacks or piercing, or I guess a slashing. Slashing, um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess that wouldn't help in this case. Yeah. That That's more like for bosses. Yeah. To find a boss, I suppose. Who's got both? <laughs> Who's got, yeah, it's, it's a D boss. And then I, I use my other one. Alright, you guys, you guys work it out? Yeah, yeah, I found yeah. Out, like, mine, mine doesn't work unless you're like a boss that's gotten buffed or something. Yeah, the curse he has will uh, remove damage resistances. Oh! So he's resistant to slashing damage and that, or electric damage, then it would remove that. I got you, I got you. That's actually a pretty good uh, ability. Um, okay, uh, but it is... It's the one in front of you. Oh, go ahead. Do you have Blood Maledict? Blood Maledict. Oh, he's doing, like with his claws, he's doing uh, electrical damage or lightning damage or whatever. Yeah. Is that... Yeah, I got Blood Maledict. Yeah, you're, okay, you're, you're, you're rolling an extra 1d6 on your damage? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> He's the one like when I on our group where it was like you do two D six damage and I rolled two ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. All right, the shadow one for you again. He's got multi attack. He's gonna swipe at you three times. He's gonna attempt to hit you, Jorgen. See if he does it. Yep. Uh, he missed twice, but he hit it on one. Uh, so. You take, um, here, I'm just going to double it. Oh, two points of damage on his crit. So, you know. Two points of damage? Yep, he didn't, uh, he didn't do well. He didn't do well at all. So. <laughs> uh, so it's the wolf in front of you, Alakar. Uh, but he has disadvantage because he has to reach up to hit you, which was probably your... I'd imagine part of your plan. Sure, let's go with that. Uh, twelve does not hit. Uh, hang on, I gotta do this several times. Uh, nineteen hits you, right? Uh, my armor class is nineteen. Oh, so you beat it. He, uh, yeah. Ty goes to the defender. Uh, he missed all three times. Okay. Uh, so it is your turn. Do you have curse specialists? What? It, what? Um, what? Modifiers. I'm just kind of confused about this. At starting at third level, you learn to master blood curses. You gain an additional use of your blood malady season. In addition, your blood curses can target any creatures, whether they have blood or not, which is a ghost thunder feature. Yeah. Does that mean we roll two d6 per attack that we hit? Have you been doing that? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been doing one. I have dual one d6. But according to this, it's saying we have a double of additional use. Oh. Oh. Well, but I thought the additional. I thought the additional use is if it goes away, you have to do it again. So maybe you can fire them up again without taking damage. Am I understanding uh, that? So, in, yeah, instead of you taking damage every time, it's like, well, I got one more use before I take... Does that sound better? Does that sound right? Again, this is an experimental class. I haven't I haven't read a lot about uh, whatever. But it is... It's been a little while. Yeah, yeah. It is your turn, though, Alucard. What do you... Okay. You have an advantage. You have the high... high uh, you have the high ground. Uh, I have the high ground. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so do I have a damage in my attack? You do. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Roll all the dice. Roll, roll all the dice. Uh, it's forty-five and a twenty-three. Yep, that hits. Both those hit. All right. Five. 
12, uh, 8, 20. So 20 on that one. So you got to attack again, right? Yep, I have an additional attack. He's, wait, what was it? It's 5, 7, 8. It's 20. Yeah. yeah. And then... Oops, I forgot to do advantage. Well, who cares? That's good. Yeah, it's good. Well, you can roll again to see if you get a nat 20. That's all right. <laughs> uh, and 15. So 25 and a 15? 25 hits. Nine plus... 1d6. Correct. Uh, yeah, you like swipe it a bunch. It screams, uh, and it looks really messed up. Like when you hit it, you like took it one of its eyes out, but it it, it doesn't seem to be phased. Uh, it's it's just more enraged. So. And my uh, blade song will have dropped off. Okay. Yeah. So my AC is down. By... And your movement is reduced, right? Yep. Reduced. All right. You want to get it? Is your turn. It's six turns. Ah, uh, I got you. I got you. That hit? It's all right. So you hit with one claw. Yep. Ten points of damage. Yep. That hit. Five points of damage. And then, oh, four, nine all together. Well, it was, the first one was, what, ten? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 19 all together. Yeah, you clum, he looks pissed, but it's his turn next. So he is going to multi-attack you again. Try to claw your eyes out. He misses with all of his attacks. Uh, it is now the Shadow Wolf next to uh, Elikar's turn. He's in the bathroom, right? So we'll probably wait a little bit. Uh, I'll describe this to you as you were. Uh, you know, you guys are trading blow blows back and forth. Oh, go ahead. Oh, your um, your resistance slashing. Okay, so th anything they do to you will be half damage from now on. Give yourself like five hit points back because I think they've hit you for at least that. I was gonna say I completely forgot about that. Yeah, the chain of she. I don't know if the the sister hit you in there. The the zombies. The the sister. Yeah. Okay. Because that was it, that's not a slashing. Well, it probably well, would be, but, but whatever. I have bludgeoning. Piercing, slashing, oh, okay. So, yeah. Nice. So, um, Elikar, it's your turn. The wolf in front of you is going to attempt to hit you, but he's at disadvantage. So, right. yeah, those are terrible. That's actually not bad. Uh, what's your AC now? You got a 17. 17. Does that hit or no? Do I have to get an 18? What does he have to get to hit you? My AC is 17. Oh, so, yeah, Ty goes to the defender. All right, and one more time. Well, he got a natural 20, but it doesn't matter because you have the high ground. Uh, your turn now to attack at him. What? But he got a natural 20? Yeah, but he has disadvantage because you have the high ground. So he got a natural 20 and an 11. So he had to take the 11. Uh -huh. And he 
biffed it. So um, yes, for him it is very unfortunate. Yep. Okay, I will. Uh, all right, go ahead. And... Nineteen. That. And... Oh, I forgot. Uh, these are supposed to be with advantage. Mm-hmm. So you got a uh, nineteen. Nineteen hits. Twenty-four and a, sorry, nineteen and a twenty-five. I'm Bolt, that's fine. You're fine. Both those hit. All right. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I missed the five above there. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-one. Yeah. Again. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep, missed there. Eleven and twenty-six. That hit the twenty-six hit. And I'll use my inspiration to re-roll that first attack. Okay. New pair of shoes. All right, 26 and a 25. Yep, you hit him twice. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you want to kill this uh, Shadow Wolf? That's 40 damage total. Uh, what I want to do is... As I I want to like kick off the wall a little bit to ah uh, here we go all right this, this <laughs> yeah this, uh, cauldron and then stab both my shit into him while it spills its burning content all over the floor okay he screams out in pain as you like kind of follow him down to the ground with your blades the cauldron gets knocked over and you see like these. Uh, glowing like embers come out and uh, because of your guys' passive perception you notice these are the same stones that you chipped off the floating crystals or the crystals you saw here before um, uh, so he is dead 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 uh, and I'm going to move you on the ground here because you you know uh, and I'm I, I can't I'm not going to remove the cauldron, but... Um, so it's your turn, Jorgen. Uh, you're faced off with this thing. Oh, can I move? Oh, did I screw you up? Did, hang yeah. on. Go I ahead. To that stairwell? Uh, with the one right... Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to go... Yeah, go ahead. You can move now after you're in combat. Okay. You want to go up there? There you go. That's it. So... Done yeah. You see, without even, uh, just to describe this really quick before you go to combat, there is that weird purple, dark purple glow, you know, that makes it look like a rave. But you see another stone. The first time you heard you saw a stone. Now you see another stone, and you see um, uh, one of the... Um, uh, I'm just, this is more flavor, but you see one of the sisters there and she has her, uh, um, chain, chain to the ground, like you see, you know, what she was using as a weapon, one of them in the stone and you see one of them, just like the first time you guys were here, there was, there's a big black pit. Remember, and uh, Jorgen went shopping, or he went fishing. Remember, he threw his holy symbol down there, and it went away, you know, and he didn't know what happened, and he pulled it up. You see the other end of her chain uh, in the black, like a, like a like an anchor. So it's just going in like when he was fishing into nothing, and, you know, again, this mist, you don't know what it's going towards. Right... Uh, right here. You're doing combat right now, but this is just what uh, Elokar sees as he like gets to the top of the steps. But you're in the middle of combat, so it's your turn now. Uh, so what do you want to do this? What do you want to do this thing? <laughs> Q 
Keep on a keeping on. That hit. 19 hit. That hit. That also hit. Sixteen. Okay, next attacks. Oh, and three. Mm -hmm. That's a nat twenty. Nice. Crit. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is your second attack, right? Oh, okay. Well, the dice god giveth and the dice god taketh away. Uh, yeah, you hit him really, really, really hard, and he looks really messed up, but he is not dead yet. So you've, like, gouged parts out of him. He's bleeding, but he... It's almost like, um, you know the feeling, when you're a hybrid wolf and things aren't going your way, you kind of go a little berserk. He just kind of leaps at you with his claws like he's trying to grapple you and cut you at the same time. So he also has a multi-attack, and he's going to attempt to... That is a natural 20. Uh, let's see what he does for damage. Mm -hmm. Eight points of damage. Oh, yeah, I have, right. So, actually, he did four, what he naturally would have done with his uh, whatever. So, four points of damage. So, even though he looks like you, uh, you know, he's kind of a weird hybrid like you are, he does not have the same immunities that you have. So, you've been fucking it up while he has been not doing it. So, um, it, Alucard, is your turn now. Okay. I'm going to... Obviously, jump off the stairwell and uh, land on that thing's back with my swords, you know, plunging into it, hopefully. Oh, the the uh, sister? Oh, is there another person over there? Yeah, this is the sister. She's there. She's the one that you see, like, as you get to the top of the stairs, she's the one that, like, you just see her there, like, throw her chain in. It goes in like a like an illusion, you know, like she throws her chain in it, and then she threw her chain, uh, you know, down into this dark pit, and that that's what you saw as you were coming to the top of the steps, and then oh, we went to the organs. I thought that person was dead. No, there's more than one sister here. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my blade song again at the bonus action. Uh-huh. And, and then I'm going to run and jump. Or in the hole. And try to attack her from a leaping attack. All right. Uh, I just do an acrobatics check for me, and you have advantage on that because you're singing. I'm singing my song. So let me add. Twenty-two. Yes, you made it. Can't turn around. All right. Here, I I might be able to. Hang on. How about that? There you go. It's your turn. All right, and I'm doing my tax. So one's the you know the more acrobatic thing going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lagging? Let me refresh again. That's uh, nineteen. I just saw you got a nineteen. Uh, that hit the nineteen hit, and the, and the 19. those both hit. Here, so that's going to be uh, faster in the way. Twenty-three damage there. First attack. Okay. Um, and I would I'd like to do. Um, are there any? Does it seem like that there's? Do I have a curse? That would be good for this. I don't know. Do you have a curse? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't 
think so. <coughs> I guess that's it. Okay, and then I'll attack again. All right. Sorry, how much was that total, the first one? Five, uh, six, 23, okay. All right, seven and a 12. Both miss. So, sorry, 20, what did you say, 23 the first time? Sorry. 23. Yeah. And I can't, I can't do that same pierce again. Okay. Uh... It is your turn, Jorgen. What do you want to do? Well, I want to finish killing this thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I had the camera zoomed in to it, and I only saw it and thought you... <laughs> it was like, oh, he's he made it. I forgot. My memory sucks, apparently. All right, it's your turn. You want to kill this thing? That hit? That hit? That hit as well. How would you like to end this weird Shadow Wolf's life? Holy crap. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and you, so what happens is when you rip his chest open, you actually, you know, viscera comes out, like everything, and you just, as you, you know, plunge it in, he screams and very weakly, like, grabs your arms because he's dying. It's dying. But you actually, since you ripped his chest open, you see its heart stop beating, and it just crumples to the ground. Now you still, you're like, but not really. You still have movement, by the way. So. Okay, so. Um, Can you not move your? Oh, you can't. There you go. I was trying to, so I could see the. Um, as you, as you're moving, you hear uh, Nick's. You hear his uh, bow go off again, um, twice. He hits. Uh, you do hear the arrow sink into something. What are you What are you doing, Elikar? Sorry, you were gonna still your turn. Do you want to attack, or you just, did? Were you just figuring out your movement? I'm trying to see how far I can get because I mean it's over thirty feet, which is my natural movement. But I was looking to see if it said that. Oh, if you get more movement being in hybrid form. Yeah. I don't actually. Of course, said that, but I can't find it anywhere. Uh. Let me. I'll just say that that's as far as I can move. Hang on. Crimson right. Heightened senses. Here you go. High reform. Resilient hide. Uh, Bloodlust. Nope. I could, I could hit it with a spell, I guess. Yeah, you, you see her through the door. Well, you've already attacked and done your movement, though. Killing that thing. So, uh, Jesse, it is, or it's the, sh yeah, it's the Shadow Sister's turn, because you hit her, she turns around. Uh, and she still has one chain on her other wrist, so she, you know, obviously has a multi-attack she attempts to hit you with, uh, her. And she is fey? She is a fey creature, yes. So she has disadvantage, right? Or do you, is that still up? That's still up because it's 10 minutes, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Ten minutes, sixty turns. So I, I, I rolled the exact same number on all my dice. They all rolled eleven, so she misses on her. Uh, I was like, well, I don't know what disadvantage of the same thing is. Um, it's your turn now, though. Okay. I will continue my assault. Hang on, let me go back to the game log. Go ahead. 16 and 8 for the first attack. Well, the, uh, they both miss because you got to get a 17 or higher to hit these things. So that's your first attack. Second attack coming up. 16 and a natural 20. Okay, so a natural 20 hit. of exposure okay is that the one that makes her not resistant if she's resistant to something she isn't resistant anymore which one is that correct, correct. okay okay um, six damage from an attack or spell you can use a reaction to remove any damage or resistance dealt by the triggering attack so I'd actually have to use a, resi uh, a reaction but I'll remove any resistances Okay. Okay. Uh, how much damage are you doing together? Just 12? 12. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, it is your turn, Jorgen. <laughs> yeah, you're like 15 feet from her. You can hit her from right there. You're kind of bunched in, but I could say I, I all say you can hit her. I, I know what you're trying to do is get. I'll scooch over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you just like move your drop your elbow or whatever. Yeah. Are you just get opportunity attack if we if we move out of the range? If we move around them. Right. Yeah. Um. I was just looking because like. If I did like uh, infect wound, inflict wounds, I have to be close enough to touch her. Um. Yeah, you could you could touch her. Like I'm not. I mean, I I don't know if I can move you. No, yeah. Was, that's why I was just moving forward so I can yeah. touch Colin. But you know, I'm not. That that hit. That hit. Both those hit. Plus eight. Okay. What is that, 26? Yes. 26 See, points of damage for that round of attack? So what you notice is as you're hitting her, you do notice that you're like carved, you know, her flesh is getting carved open and stuff, but it doesn't appear that she's bleeding. It's just like black underneath her kind of ashen skin. Um, so... You know, you could tell you are doing damage and you're, you know, you're hitting her, but um, nothing. So before, uh, hang on, this other one, uh, okay, um, she's just going to try to attack you, Alucard, because she's still focused on you, even though this, you know, dumb guy just... Oh, you got two more attacks? Okay, go ahead. Uh, 16 misses, right? Misses, correct. And you got one more? Yeah, that misses too. Okay. I guess we just <laughs> well, you never know, right? You never know. I'm just excited that I didn't skip you the whole way like I normally do. I only skipped half of your attacks this time. So I'm getting, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Uh, she's still going to go for you, Alakar? And she has disadvantage, right? 
but she also has multi attack, so that sucked for her. She okay. I'm gonna take a picture of this because this has never happened before. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's never happened, but I don't see it a lot. And I'm going to send it to you guys. There you go, I sent it in Messenger. Damn. Double 20. Wow. That's disadvantage. So. That's on you, Alcar. I had to take a fill, I was like, what? Two natural 20s in a row. Holy crap, dude. Uh, no, it's just like, I've seen somebody have advantage and they got two nat ones, too. I think, uh, didn't you do that, Tatsif, as well? Didn't that happen to you? I got a one and a two. Yeah, it's, I saw a guy get uh, on advantage. He got a one and a one, and he looked at me and goes, how does that happen? I'm like, I don't know, dude. I've not really, like, I, it's happened to me. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let uh, uh, 20 points of damage. Okay. Uh, I'm over there, buddy. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not great. Less than ideal. Uh, it's your turn, Elicar. Now remember. You could do the healing potion thing, the bonus action. You uh, can drink the potion, but you have to roll. But if you take your full action, which means you can't attack because you're you're having a whatever drink action, whatever you want to call it, you get the full effects of the healing potion. So I'll leave it up to you. Gotcha. I take the full effect. Well, I don't know how many. Yeah, I'm gonna just. I mean, I, I have to kind of make best use of my. Um... You have six healing potions, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. It's not like you're like, wow, I only have one or two of these things. I don't know what to. Let, let's see if we can get rid of this first lady here. This, uh, yeah, Faye creature. All right, so I'm gonna go in for my both attacks. Okay. 21. Yep, that hit. 7. Misses. Six, so 17 first. Hit. Uh, 17 hits, yeah. Second attacks. 19. Mm hmm. And 11. The 11 misses. Uh, 12 <laughs> damage for the second. Okay. Okay. Uh, 29 total. Oh, 29 total. She looks very, very hurt. Uh, it is your turn, Jorgen. Finish her off, Jorgen. <laughs> nope. Hey, there you go, that hit. How do you want to kill the Shadow Sister? How would you like to end her life? End her on life or whatever. Shadow fell life. Shadow heart. Whatever. Anyway, what do you want to do? <laughs> When you do that, you see that she does not have... She has, like, a skeletal system, but she does not have internal organs. So when you do that, it, she, she like, falls apart like a... You know, like, she just... Yeah, just, like, falls apart like a doll. So I will kill her. Uh, so as you guys do that, right when she falls over... You see the chain that she threw into the stone. And, and this, by the way, uh, the chain looks taut like, you know, you fish, Todd Ziff. 
Jesse, we fish. It looks like there's a fish on. <laughs> it's taut. Something's going on down in the... Is the chain tied to anything? It's going in the, um, in the stone. Not even like a python, like a magical stell, just putting it in the stone. So it, it like it's almost like fused to the stone. Okay, so it's like stone on one side and it's going into the yeah. soup. I don't think I, I don't think I can do that with a mini, but you understand. Like it's like taunt yeah. like at a forty five degree angle or whatever the angle is, like going into the whatever. Um but as you guys kinda of look over, both of you guys make a perception check for me. Mm. Oh yeah. And it doesn't fucking matter because I got level five. <laughs> seven. I got seven and a seven. seven, and seven. <laughs> yeah, you have in Well you have inspiration. You can re roll. Don't you have inspiration? Everybody has inspiration, don't they? Yeah, I mean, Would, attacks. Yeah. It's your choice. Thirteen. You're good enough. You can tell me. <laughs> Just never tell me, man. Hey, uh, so you do see, uh, Jorgen, I'm going to go this way. You see another sister appear, and she's done the same thing. She's put her one of her chains on the, the, um, the stone and thrown the other one in and the moment you and and it's like she she throws it in and just kicks it over you know and when it goes in it goes taut like the other one so they're both pulling in and you guys feel a boom uh both you guys and, and like uh the walls around you start to shake like an earthquake almost um both you guys can you just give me a uh dexterity saving throw Good. What'd you get, uh, Elicar? Uh, uh, you take, um, Elicar, you take four points of psychic damage. You hear something scream in your head, and you guys both see the outline of the dragon uh, flying over. Like you saw going northbound when you followed it here, you see it fly over the top of you guys. Um, and now it is your guys' uh, turn. What would you like to do? Is it my turn? Uh, you know what? It, I, I consider you're probably going to attack this creature, right? Well, I was either going to attack the creature or try to break that chain off of the. Break the chain! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about this? Who has a higher dex right now? Uh, higher dex. Same. Uh, oh, great. Uh, <laughs> what's your. <sighs> okay, just do a custom roll. Do a roll off a d20. We'll see. We'll finish this. We'll have the dice decide. All right, Alakar, you're first. All right, I drink a potion. Okay, uh, roll to... Oh, you get the full effects because it's not in combat, right? Full effects, hopefully. Yeah. So it's uh, greater potion, 44 plus 4, which is... 12. 20, right? 4d4 would be 16 plus, yeah, 20, right? Right? Yeah. 20, 20 points. 20, so I get 20 points at the end. Correct. Okay, uh, then uh, Elicar, it's your turn. I'll give you the turn. What do you want to do? Uh, Jorgen. Or, sorry, Jorgen, sorry. Oh, well, he yelled break the chain, so... Are you going to try to wrestle it out of the thing? Well, I was going to see if I could hit that thing hard enough to break it loose. Alright, give me an attack with your claws. Give me an attack, a, a swing. Swing with your... Like you'd be doing a normal attack, so you probably want to... Do you want to grab it or just hit it once or, like, double strike it, or what do you want to do? Uh, I mean, I can double strike it. Yep, okay. 
So both both of these, uh, the first one you swipe, uh, your claws just grate across it. And you see sparks from like your claws. The second one does, you you do hit it a little bit and it looks like, you know, like one of the tines of the chain is busted. Yeah, do it like you're doing a full attack. Okay, because I got a 25. Mm hmm I saw that. And a 20. Yeah, so like you hit the um, chain and you, you guys see an explosion because both you guys make another dexterity saving throw for me. Jorgen, you take uh, six points of uh, psychic damage. Uh, Alakar, you take 13 points of psychic damage. Um, when you hit the chain, this stone hits the ground, and when it does, it just creates a shockwave and blows back. I'm not going to make you guys get... Um, well, you, you guys just get knocked back five feet. So you get knocked back here. Well, I'll say ten. Here, and then here. Uh and um, you hear everything shake again, like the you hear the screaming of the dragon. This time, when you look up, it's not flying straight. It looks like it's circling. Uh, who got the better dice roll this time? Uh, last time. All right, Alcar, it's your turn again. All right, uh, and that chain's broken. Yes, it's gone. But this, this. Yeah, this sister appears like she's, she's uh, to be above board, it's a ready action. She looks like she's in a ready stance, if you've ever been in PE. Well, you have. Uh, but she's, it looks like, and she's looking right at you, like, you know, bring it, basically. And, and there's a, she has a chain connected to the wall behind her. It's going in the mist like the first one was. It's like she's trying to pull the stone down. But the other end of the chain is connected to her or the stone? It's exactly like what was before. She had enough time to bamf over here, put the chain in the rock, and throw it in the mist. So it's the same setup as the other one. Gotcha. Like where is the... Fishing for something down there. No, I got that. Where, where is the chain connected exactly? Uh, hang on. Let me spin the camera around. It is connected, if I can do the light. It's connected on this side right here. Got it. About mid medium height. Is this area... That's all that black mist. You know, it's like a cauldron of black nothing, basically. Gotcha. Uh, and I can't move my character quite yet. Oh, sorry. Uh, now you should be able to. I put his turn on. Actually, you notice you do. Hang on. Let me get rid of this, because I think if I clear the list and go into it... There you go. Now you probably have a free reign of moving your guys. Um... Can I use a bonus action to get a bomb out of my pack? Of course. I'm going to say, with the bonus action, do you want to do the pine tar? I'm not going to make you do another. Is this all? Uh, yes. Okay. It's kind of all together. Yep. And it's probably at, as I'm sort of running, so I'll do my 40 feet, 5. Yeah, because your song's still active, right? 15, 20. Well, I, re I reactivated it. Right, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's still the second time it's active. Now I know she's ready. And I know she, she's also going to, she has disadvantage, but she still gets an opportunity attack because you went past her. So we'll see. Right. See if that nat 20 happens. Okay, make sure I'm not. 19. I'm back up to 19. What do you mean? Not oh, you have net. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, because you're a song, right? My song, I'm singing. Uh, her, hang on, sorry. I got a, her bonus I'm not sure about here to hit. Because she did get low, but she has a bonus to hit. Uh, does a 19 hit you? My AC is 19. Okay, so you tied it. So yeah, she misses you both times when you went by her. So uh, you just move, now you have an action. And I'll use my action to put the bomb on the chain. Oh. Um, and... I don't know how 
how we we did the and like light it, I guess, to light the bomb. I would say it would take you another action to like, cause, well, because you don't you don't do fire, right? You do um, radiant, right? You'd have to get out your tinder box and like try to strike the fuse or whatever. Or I guess we never. I, well, I have a torch. Time. Yeah. Huh? I lit it last time. You lit it last time? Yeah, because he's got fire on his claws, so he can, like, you know. Oh. Ah, yes. I, I just do that. That's my action. So you put the bomb. Okay. Smeared onto the, you know, chain. Okay. It's, uh, it's your turn, uh, Jorgen. What do you want to do? Thirty is one more. You get one more. Yeah, there you go. It, it's okay, guys. I'm not one of these people that's like, yeah. Uh, 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 just to give you a heads up, Todd, if you play at that other table, they do measure things. I'm okay with you being five feet off. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna... uh, I'm it's a radiant damage right sacred flames is radiant do you have like firebolt i have magic missile nope that's force damage if you want to knock it off the chain which i doubt you want to do uh guiding bolt i think that's also radiant i think You're like, you know, these all seem good when I was picking them. <laughs> Maybe some fire spells. Um, I have, I have alchemist fire. Yeah, I have alchemist fire. Well, I had, I don't know if I still have alchemist fire. Oh, you I do have alchemist fire. Yeah, you want to huck it at the thing to catch it on fire? Now that's gonna. Now just to let you know, if this thing explodes and you're near it, uh, if he does it on his turn and it explodes, I'll treat it like an inanimate object, and if he does enough damage to the inanimate object, I'll, I'll, I'll be totally above board with this. Your bomb has 10 hit points. If I'll, I'll give it 12 to give it a little bit harder. If he throws the alchemist fire and it catches on fire and he does enough damage, your bomb will explode, but it'll hit it'll hit Elakar and the sister. Fair? Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Because <laughs> you're right in the radius of like where it would hit. I'm just... Yeah, so like, what the heck? Hang on. So like, so like, it'd be here, and then it'd be what like, oh, 60. 60 feet. What? Uh, five tiles, right? Right. It's, uh, Twelve. Twelve tiles. So it would hit everybody. Yeah. Okay. I'm just. I just. <laughs> I'm just. So. Uh, it's a bigger bomb. What do I do? Roll uh, just a, a ranged attack for your alchemist fire. Ranged attack. Yeah. So just roll. Just roll a d20 and add your dex. We'll say your plus three to it. And if it has twelve, it has twelve hit points. And alchemist fire does one d4 per turn, right? I can just do my crossbow. Oh, shoot it up. Oh, you... Well, it's not. that's not going to catch him on fire. I'm saying you're saying you use the range attack. I was going to say that. Yeah. Oh, I got you. No, just do a custom roll and then add plus three your dexterity or whatever. And the alchemist fire does 1d4 plus what a turn? Uh, fire damage at the start. Of it does 18. 18? Okay. Like right away, like napalm? Yeah, it, it, on hit, the target takes 1d4 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. Okay, so if it splashes, you guys are going to take that, but it'll start the bomb. It'll light the bomb. Yep. So you guys will take that damage, but the bomb will be lit. Yep. So give me the attack roll to see if you, what'd you get? See if you hit the thing. With the fire. That's your plan, right? I'm not. 
Yeah, yeah, he did. He did a cuss. Uh, the did you already roll? roll? It was Twenty. What did I roll? Oh, there it is. Fifteen. Yeah, you hit it. Yeah. So you hit it. 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. So it hits. The alchemist fire breaks on the chain. You see it like burn the chain, but it lights the fuse too. And uh, now you're gonna take what was that? What did you say? One d four. Um, okay. So you guys are all gonna take one d four. Was it plus something or just one d four? Uh, three points of damage. Everybody takes three points of damage. Now what happens is because the sister gets burned and you guys have already, like she's been doing stuff and whatever, she burns and loses her balance and falls into the hole. So I'm going to, but it, it causes her to become unbalanced. Uh, can we run? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. It's your turn now. Yeah. Twelve tiles away. Yeah, you could, which, uh, hang on. I mean, I'm already... It's 60 more. feet. Yeah, so... Uh, I have to make it out of this distance. Okay, so let me mark that. I'm going to mark it with the light, so then I'm going to keep the light right there. So if you don't want to keep that, you because you got to move your whatever, right? So I'm going to keep the light right there. That's where you guys got to get to. What what do you guys... Oh, shoot. It's going to move it. Uh, basically, where the end of this rubble is, where this little grass thing is with the rubble. So that's where you guys have to move if you don't want to get exploded by the bomb. See that? I've got it. Run. <laughs> uh, so on your turn, how many feet can you guys go? Because this thing's going to go off the next uh, turn. So, Jorgens, first go ahead and do your movement. you got to get to right here before the end of your turn. Do 30 feet. And you can take the dash action, remember, which I would recommend. What does dash do? You get another half your movement speed, but you don't get to attack or anything like that. So you get your full movement speed, then the dash bonus action. Yeah, so 15 feet, so three more, whatever. So you'd be... I gotta get, I gotta get over to where I can see. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, you're right at the end. I'll, I'll say that when this goes off, you're probably going to take half damage. I'll, I'll make you... Uh, so go ahead, Alakar, it's your turn. All right. I'm your, use your blade song... Action. Yeah, your blade things... Blade song, so that in the dash, would you say the dash does double you, your? No, it's half your movement speed, but you don't get to take another action. But really, I imagine right now your your one action you want to do is run out of the. And normally we wouldn't do this, but this is a ticking bomb, so you're trying to run out before it explodes. So. So I'm going to. So cast you have. You have. Ex, oh. Action. I'm going to cast ex, expeditious retreat. Yeah, that's... It's now concentration. Mm -hmm. It allows me to use dash as a bonus action. Okay. Uh, I guess I didn't need to do that, really. No. So if I'm just going to use dash... Well, I think... Never mind. Yeah. So, you got to get to here. So, you get 40... I have... Yeah, I have 40 feet plus dash as my action, which gives me 60 feet. So, you'll be right to the edge. You're, you're like, right at the end of the explosion, right? Well, you're... But you were further back, so count. Because you were, like... Yeah, and then you get half. And your if your movement speed's half, it's half of what your movement speed is. Uh, Would it be 60? 60. Oh, you're right there. 60. Okay. Yeah. We're both right at the end. Yeah, you're both. And that's my action. I, so I, I, uh, I'm not casting that expedious retreat. I'm just using dash as my action. Okay, so what I need you to both to do is read me the bomb. Is it like a dex thing or whatever? Like you guys get to roll a dex and take half damage, I'd imagine. Light this bomb, throw it 60 feet away. Each creature within. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I can throw it up to 60 feet away. Each creature within 5 feet at that point must succeed on a DC 12 dexterity saving throw or take 3D6. Oh, I got I missed. I thought that was a 60 foot. That's. You know what? I would say I would say in the heat of the moment, you don't test these bombs out. You got them. I mean, you obviously trust the people you bought them from. But I think it is. 
I think it is very safe to assume that you would run as far away from an explosive as possible. Tatsif, Tatsif used to do this for a living, so I imagine you guys probably took another couple feet back even when you uh, were like, well, you know, it's going to do this. I'm going to stand back over here. You know, safety okay, first, right? It's a portal to another dimension. Yeah. Happening. Yeah, safety first. Safety first, right? Safety first, right. Top three. Right, Tatsif, safety first, right? You know, you'd be like, I don't know, like, it seems like we should be back so, farther. You know. Yeah. Uh, so just roll for damage for the bomb. Is it not working? Is it? I'm looking at the game log. Oh, there it goes. No, I had a cat. Oh. Eight damage, eight fire damage. So it explodes. You see the chain get blown, uh, and and the stone is still uh, visible. Um, but you see that alchemist fire has like, um, it, it's like leaked on the stone from when it exploded. How much? How many turns did it do damage? Uh, or you said one d four. So I'm gonna roll another one d four. One D four. It actually doesn't even say when it expires. It's just per turn until it's extinguished. Uh, so two more points of damage, and you actually see that it burns the rock. Uh, it looks like it's burning the stone. Um, you guys, uh, again, you guys hear that crack, and what you see is like a shadow start to come down. And I'm going to do the thing. So what happens is, uh, I need to. Oh no! The 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 you got rid of the chain, so it didn't explode or anything. It didn't cause the whatever. Uh, let me look at something here. Uh, Dragon. There we go. I have a bomb that its radius is 60 feet. That'd be crazy. What happens is, you guys are here. And you see this dragon come down and land right here at the... Actually, sorry. I haven't moved him into position yet. He comes down and lands right here. Boom, right where you guys are. Whoops, Let's see if he... I'm trying to get him to face you guys. Whoa, whoa, he's spinning. Hang on. He's just spinning around. That's weird. Okay. Stop spinning. Dumb dragon. I have a hold of him and he freaking... There we go. Uh, he's looking at you guys. You probably don't see him yet because it hasn't, but I'm going to do this. I see him. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I made him smaller accidentally because I thought they were... They just do... You're like, oh, he's cute. It's a how you train... How to train your dragon size. Okay. Yeah. A um... He's actually much bigger than this, and when he lands on the ground, he appears just like this. Like, you see, like, this ichor coming out of his mouth. When he lands where you guys are, like I said, everything was destroyed. Nothing is put together, you know? Like, there's just a big hole for him to, to like, land in. And when he lands, it, it starts breaking the, um, you know, the walls, and he starts climbing down the, uh, you know, the wall, and he... So here's what happens. He leaps down, and him leaping down causes a massive, like, earthquake. I need both of you guys to roll a dex uh, saving throw. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jorgen, you guys are next to each other. The rubble that you are at collapses, and you start to fall downward. Uh, or sorry, Jorgen. Yeah, you start to fall downward, and what you see is below you, uh, you see a massive, like, underbelly of, like, caverns and caves, like this fort was built, you know, on, on, a, on a hillside, so there's something underneath, and your feet, um, you start, like, you know, using your claws or whatever to get up, and you're starting to slip down. And everything around the dragon, like, everything starts to shake, and you see the floor start to collapse. So, like, the floor is collapsing under you guys right now. Um, okay. Uh, we have a 
Do we, can we take an action? Or is yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you. Well, I'll give you a reaction. What do you want to do? Because everything's kind of falling. You, um, Jorgen, as you're falling, since you, um, hang on a second, I got to do the damage. What do you uh, actually? What, what is your reaction before you kind of like start to fall down this pit of like cavern? Basically, I'll say. I tried to like jump up and give me a, an athlete. You guys both want to do that? Well, oh, am I falling too? Uh, no, you're kind of on the edge. You have a good footing, but this dragon's looking right at you, and it appears that he is readying the breath weapon. And he is. Grab Jorgen? Yes. Your reaction, you want to grab him? Yeah. And, you know, like, we're both trying to, I'm trying to catch him as he's falling. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me a dex check again to, like, you know, grab him. Saving throw? Uh, no, it's just a regular like ability check. With a plus three, okay, thirteen. You grab him, but as you turn, you look at the dragon. Hang on, I gotta look up damage really quick. Sorry, it's uh, uh, uh. Sorry, I also am, uh, it's loading slowly because apparently everybody's uh, playing tonight or something. I don't know. Uh, I have to refresh quite a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, Is this dragon a aberration or undead dragon or is that a dragon dragon? Uh, he is, he would be considered, you know, I don't know. You're wondering if he has. Uh, I wonder, yeah, I don't know. He's he's basically just a like a, he's a, he's a necrotic dragon, so he is like well he'd be considered like undead almost. So he okay. he would be undead. Uh, okay. Okay. So you grab Jorgen, and I'm rolling. I'm to. Yeah, you you grabbed him. You grabbed him, and you you look back, and you're holding on, and Jorgen's like dangling. You know, in his hybrid form, and you're holding on to him. Because what's your strength? Sorry. Uh, zero. Oh, it's 11. <laughs> zero? Okay. Uh, you both... plus, plus, plus zero. Yeah. Uh, strength is not mine. Okay, you're barely holding on. Okay. And what he does is he attempts to just swipe at both of you and claw at both of you and knock you down the hole. Um... It has a double attack with its claws, but it has a disadvantage on hitting you, Jorgen, but it's basically, it's going to go all out and try to multi-attack you. It's basically trying to knock you down the hole. So, well, you're holding on to them, so that's a natural one, so he missed there, but he gets a couple other attacks. And I've expended my reaction already. Uh, he does... Uh, Hang on. He does three points of damage, but since he actually hits you, uh, you need to roll a uh, uh, dex saving throw to not fall down, like break your concentration, basically. So, oh, actually, yeah, give me a... Con yeah, like you're, you're basically... 21 dex save, oh, concentration? Yeah, do... Uh, actually, hang on, let me see how... They have a stat here. Let's see. Actually, give me a strength saving throw. Wait, strength or dex? Which which one is higher? Which one do you have advantage in? Is it strength well, or dex? For me is higher. Okay, roll. Well, give me. Would you roll? I rolled a twenty-one for dex. All right, you um you are still up. A Jorgen, can you give me another deck saving throw? Because you're trying to like scamper and like grab the side of like what's collapsing and everything. All right, you grab the side, and as you do, uh, you um, uh, 
you kind of scamper up, but like there's still stones kind of like falling. Uh, Elikar, you get a reaction, and what's happening is a dragon is rearing up to like shoot again. It looks like he's readying a breath weapon. Um, can I yank Jorgen up? Well, he's up. He's like scampering up behind you. Like you feel, you know, he he got a grip on like one of the stones beside him, and he's like pulling himself up. All right. Um, I will. Can I? Can I move? Oh, right, it's just a reaction. You have a reaction. Yeah. Oh, uh, reaction. I will. So I have I have this reaction I can do called the absorb elements. Oh, okay. But I have to know like I assume it's going to be an acid. So I could absorb an acid attack, but not fully absorb it. Uh. The spell. the spell captures some of the incoming energy, lessens lessening its effect on you and storing it for your next melee attack. You have resistance to the triggered damage type until the start. Your next turn. Also it's the first time you hit with a melee attack on your turn. The target takes an extra one d damage of the triggering type of the spell. So, so you, you get okay. So what happens is you, Jorgen, you get to the top of the hole, and this thing breathes out this black fire on both of you. And you both need to make another dexterity saving throw, and you need to beat a DC of eighteen. Is it, a, is it fire damage? Yes, yeah, I'll consider it fire damage. It says shadowy fire. We'll consider it fire damage. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll cast absorb elements as my reaction to mm -hmm. have uh, resistance to that. Okay. If it hits me. I got a 16, so I'm not sure I need it. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jorgen. What did you get? 17. Okay, so you both, you both failed. All right, so... Uh, the fire crumbles the rocks, and you guys get buried, but you take, as, like, you're falling down, because he's basically blowing all the rocks underneath, you know, all the stones underneath you, like, away. Um, you take, because uh, both of you guys failed your, but you're still resistant, so you take, I'm going to do... I'll do the resistance. You tell me the damage. Uh... You guys both take uh, 20 damage, but if you're resistant, you took 10, right? What yeah. type of damage would it be? Uh, fire. Fire damage. Oh. <laughs> Not piercing or bludgeoning or... Uh... Well, you said we were falling. That's why I was asking. Right. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna make you damage. Basically, you're slowly, like, it's one of those, like, slow fall things where, like, because these are caverns below you, it's kind of like uh, Homer Simpson. You're like falling down the stone, you know? Uh, I, yeah, and so you're not... Stone Yeah, and stones are falling on you. So I'm just going to make you guys take two points of damage from that. I'm not going to make that too much. But basically, um, you guys, like, the, you just fall down this hole and uh, you guys are out. You're passed out. So that's where we're going to end it.